So once again, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how to cost out inventory, especially periodic inventory, okay? So once again, this is what the uh, worksheet would look like. It's split into a couple sections. So here, right here is your purchases section right here. You have your inventory on hand section here. You have this section here, which is helps you calculate your um, total new balances. Right here's your little um, workspace. And then right here is going to be your uh, returns and allowances, okay? Today we're focused, we're gonna be focusing on purchases only um, as we go and move further down into the lecture chapter five review is where I'm gonna start introducing what happens to when you do have returns and allowances, okay? So we're just gonna go through each scenario one at a time, all right? So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the PowerPoint and we'll go ahead and kind of understand what does it mean to ha have per uh, periodic FIFO. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and once again, we're going to be introducing you to what a costing method is. Okay. So yesterday we talked about what periodic inventory is, how we keep track of it. So in this case, right, we keep track of periodic inventory um, not as often as we would with perpetual inventory, right? We keep track of it at the end of a giving accounting period. Okay, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or however means it makes it easier for you to keep track of your inventory, okay? But in this case, right, our motive or our, you know, intentions of keeping track of this inventory is maybe we sell this product, we don't sell it very often. So there's no need for us to have to constantly keep track of whether we need to buy, we need to purchase more or not. It's more like we, we, we sell the product, but we don't care to keep track of it as often. And the unique thing about um, the idea of periodic inventory is that you do need to take some kind of physical count to know how much items you sold at the end of the accounting period, okay? But now let's talk about, okay, so we talked about how to keep track of it. Now let's talk about how we actually cost it, okay? So the costing um, methods are going to be these three here, okay? We have FIFO, which stands for first in or first out, um, which is very typical of many grocery stores, right? Because typically when you sell kind of these kind of items, they have like an expiration date, okay? So a great example will be when you sell milk at the store, right? You each bottle of milk that you sell has an expiration date. You can't be selling your old milk first and expect your new milk to maintain it being new by the time the person buys it, right? So they would always put it on the shelf according to the, the, the most recent and then it will keep it up to the most, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the longer date, right? So you're always going to have like your, the, the freshest milk in the front and then, or I'm sorry, your freshest milk in the back and then your little older milks in the front, okay? Because the idea here is that you're trying to sell your older batches first or your first batch that you buy, right? The first batch, maybe they're all marked September and then your second batch are all marked October. You want to try to sell all your first batches first before dipping into your second batch, okay? So again, typical stores that use the FIFO method would be a grocery store because the idea of having perishable goods they don't last long, so they have a time frame on them, okay? So anything that has an expiration date would typically be used as um, FIFO, right? Where um, we have another one called LIFO, which is last in are usually the first to go out. So last in, first out, which, you know, typically anything that has a, lo a long lifespan or... Um, a shelf life, okay? Usually, this is what would happen. So an example would be like a cell phone store, like the iPhone, right? Typically, right, 
the newer release of some kind of phone. So again, we have the iPhone 13, right? That would typically sell more quicker or sell out first than your more older models, right? The iPhone 12, the iPhone 11s, right? The iPhone 10s, if they still exist. That is what I mean. When Apple releases a new product, the new product tends to sell out first than the older products. Okay, so that's a great example there. So anything that has technology or some kind of long life shelf, right, would usually use something like LIFO. Okay, so like a broom, right, has a long life shelf, uh, but you have an old model versus a newer model. Maybe some people would be more attracted to the newer model, so they'll buy that one more than for the older model. Even though they're the same exact product, one is just a little newer, okay? And then, of course, another example, uh, I mean, uh, the other one is going to be weighted average or for per periodic will be moving average, okay? So in this case, it's just average costing in general, okay? This one is for typical products that you sell more frequently and often that you buy purchases of inventory much more often and you don't really care how much the price is. So in this case, right, because you're constantly selling it out, the best way to um, understand it would be something that's a natural resource. So a great example will be water, right? Water bottles, right? No matter how many cases of bottles that you buy, it doesn't. You shouldn't be able to. You shouldn't be keeping track of which which cases came first or which cases came last because at the end of the day, water will sell at a constant rate. Water is uh, water is a natural resource that everybody needs to buy, right? Whether it's on sale, whether it's there or not, whether it could, even though water bottles do have a long shelf life, right? You can have water bottles for more than a year. Water bottles tend to be the one that customers constantly buy at any given time. And it's a kind of thing that you can't really mark your prices high or mark your prices low for because it's a natural resource. It's constantly being purchased. It's constantly being bought. So in this case, right, we treat this as if like no matter how many purchases we buy or how many per how many um, items we sell, we're going to get them all together, calculate a grand total and take an average cost. OK, meaning splitting the cost evenly throughout the entire batch of quantity. OK, so in this case, we don't care what came first we don't care what came last we care about what the overall total amount is and what is the average cost okay and of course there's also specific id but in this class because specific id is going to be t more tailored for um you know a specific type of uh company or some kind of uh, like if you're selling a specific type of product is only be will be basically um, optional um, to use specific ID. Now specific ID is basically just like what it says, right? It uses some kind of specific identification code to keep track of its inventory, okay? So a great example will be an auto repair shop, right? You cannot go to an auto repair shop with your car, any car, and be able to get any specific part to get it fixed, right? The the car man, the um, auto repair shop needs to take a look at your car. If you have a, um, a what is it, a Toyota Prius, they're gonna have to look up one the manufacturing, which is. The Toyota, right? They have to look at what the model is. It's a Prius. They have to look at the year, 2020. They have to look at the specific part, a water pump, right? So in this case, right, this is how you keep a specific ID type of inventory is it's going to be based on those specific criteria, right? Um, the car brand, the model, the year, the, um, the exact part, and then they cost it out accordingly. So in this case, an auto repair shop will have some like few things that are in stock because maybe they, um, you know, 
have frequent customers with the same type of car, they will have a few items on stock, but most likely um, if a random car comes in and they don't have that part, they order it on, uh, they order it as they need it. So in this case, specific ID is something that I'm not going to teach you in this class just because it's going to be really specific on what kind of product you sell. Where, um, you know, more common ones such as FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average are more common uh, costing methods that we will actually be seeing in a real life scenario. Whether we sell groceries, whether we sell clothes, whether we sell... Um, you know, jewelry, something very, very, very normal, okay, where specific ID is going to be based on um, a very particular part of item. So in this case, there are a total of four different costing methods, but I'm only going to teach you three, okay? I'm only going to teach you FIFO, LIFO, and weighted slash moving average, okay? Specific ID, I will be testing you this, okay? whether, um, what are the costing methods. If specific ID is on there, it is a costing method, okay? I just do not teach it in, te in this class just because, once again, it just depends on what kind of business you go into, okay? So for today, 5.3 is going to be mainly focused on FIFO, okay? We're going to take a look at first in, first out method. So when we talk about first in, first out method, these are the formulas that you are going to be taking a look at. Okay? So when we take a look at these formulas, we need to remember that when we receive our batches of inventory or purchase our inventory, right? First few things that we need to do is we need to determine the purchase price, which is quantity times unit price. And then we need to figure out what the total cost is. If there's freight included, we need to get the total cost. All right, and the most crucial part and formula that you need to have is going to be the cost per item, okay? In this case, right, we need to keep track of each batch of inventory and each batch of inventory is going to have a specific cost per item okay because when we cost it right and when we sell it we're getting rid of each batch individually now if we understand that when we look in a market right when we're constantly purchasing items we can't expect a every purchase of the item to be the same because due to the market, due to supply and demand, due to what's available, okay, especially resources, right? If there's a shortages on cows or if cows got sick, right, then that will cause a shortage in milk and therefore milk would be more expensive to produce because of that shortage. So we have to understand that the cost per item will fluctuate depending on what your purchase price is and how much freight it takes for you to actually acquire the actual um, item, okay? Other things that we'll take a look at is going to be goods available, which is going to be your beginning inventory plus your net purchases. And we'll talk about this section uh, when we take a look at our table, okay? And then, of course... Your cost of goods sold is going to be your um, goods available minus your ending inventory, which should give you your cost of goods sold, okay? okay. So let's take a look at our example here, right? Uh, we're going to take a quick example of these three little scenarios here where um, our assumption is that we are purchasing um, inventory, Right, assume that sales tax is 8.25%. So in this case, you won't see sales tax. I just threw it in there just to kind of throw you guys off. Um, but in this case, right, on June 1st, we purchased um, 100 toys at $1.25 each with the freight costing 25, right? We're going to also practice how to journalize that, right? In this case, this is periodic inventory. So we're going to recognize the purchase expense and we're going to recognize a freight expense and however way that you made it you made a payment to it is going to be whatever your credit amount. So in this case I'm assuming that this was on an account. 
If I got 125 plus 25 gives you a total of 150. So what we're gonna do with this information is we're gonna plug it into our inventory worksheet. Okay, so first things first is we have the date, we have the quantity, we have the unit price, and we have the freight expense, okay? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to be solving the empty columns. So in this case, we've got to solve for the purchase price, which is quantity times unit price, which in this case, 125, right? A do, um, 100 times $1.25 gives you 125, okay? Now we need to solve for our total cost, which in this case, it's going to be our purchase price plus our freight, which in this case, 25 plus, uh, plus 125 is going to give us a grand total of $150, okay? So this is where it's most important because this is how we also keep track of our inventory, okay? We're going to keep track of our inventory based on this cost per item, so in this case, cost per item slash is going to be the, the total cost divided by your quantity. So in this case, we're going to take 150, which is our total cost, and we're going to divide it amongst the quantity of 100, okay? So what we're doing here is we are splitting up the freight to the total quantity, so then... Um, when we cost out our inventory, when we sell out our inventory, right, we're making sure that the customer pays for the entire cost it takes for the asset, um, for the asset, right? So in this case, not just the purchase price, right? We're including every single expense, right, in order uh, for us to sell the product, right? It's going to be considered the total cost of the asset which will include any shipping, any freight, any taxes, right? We want to make sure that when we sell it, that uh, we sell it at a price point that will allow the customers to not only give us a profit, but to also cover all the costs it takes to get the inventory to the store, okay? So in this case, right, that's what we're doing here. 150 divided by 100 gives me a $1.50, okay? So in this case, that is my first batch of inventory right there, okay? Now here's the next one, right, on June 11th, right? Um, we made another purchase of 100 toys at $1.28 with the freight costing 26. So once again, you're going to journalize it just like this, right? 128 plus 26 gives you 154. And again, you're going to plug it into your inventory worksheet once again. And we're going to solve for those empty columns again. So in this case, right? 100 times $1.28 is going to give you a purchase price of 128. Plus your $26 of freight is going to give you a total cost of 154. Now I need to solve for my cost per item. In this case, right, 154 divided by 100 is going to give you $1.54. Now just looking at this right here, we have clear vision that we have two batches of inventory, right? We have one on June 1st and we have one on June 11th, right? Just right here, we have 100 costing me a dollar fifty and we have a hundred costing me a dollar fifty four so this is where the next step comes into play well since we know that at the end of the giving accounting period it gives you that you have this piece of information but since I am done with this with this um, accounting period what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna total up my total quantities my total purchase price my total freight and my total total cost so in this case, right, I have a total of 200 items, costing me a grand total of $253, with a total cost of $51 of freight, giving me a total total cost of $304. So I'm just adding up my columns because the one thing that we're going to do with these um, calculations is we're going to carry these four items into the bottom section of our next table which is going to look like this right so we have that entire column 
um, where we figure out how to solve for the net purchases as well as solve for the cost of goods sold. Now again, net purchases column is going to, you're gonna plug in all the numbers that you saw from up here, right? What was the total quantity at what total cost? How much was freight? And how much was your total cost, okay? So in this case, right, we plug it in that 200 items cost me a total purchase price of $253, okay? Of course, we're going to be assuming in this in this uh, chapter 5.3, uh, we're going to ignore that we have any returns and allowances because in chapter 5 review, I will show you what happens when we when we have returns and allowances, okay? And then right here, we have um, your subtotal, okay? And then, of course, we're going to add your freight because freight adds to, adds to the total cost, not quantity, right? Um, freight is invisible. So in this case, there it is, freight of $51. So then your total net purchases is going to equal 200 items at a total, total cost of $304, okay? So this is very important This because this plugs into your beginning balance, right? In this case, right, we're assuming that there is no beginning balance, right? Because that's what the formula is, is part of the net purchases. But in this case, because we're starting as of June 1st, we're assuming we had no beginning balances. So then now we need to carry the information that we saw from above in the table for our net purchases, carry that down. So then we plug into our formula what the goods available was, which was your beginning balance plus your net purchases, which in this case, we don't have any beginning balances. So that means our net purchases will become our total goods available. So when I talk about goods available, this is what I have available to sell, okay? So again, I was also given that on June 15, we had a total of 80 toys left on hand. So that means my ending inventory quantity is 80 toys available, okay? It's on hand, okay? So this is where we need to plug in more numbers, okay? So our first formula we're gonna take a look at is going to be solving for the cost of goods sold. Well, if I have 200 items available, right, and I have 80 items left, then the assumption is that how many items did I sell? Well, 200 minus 80 is gonna give you 120. So this number here is how many I sold. And this is where you need to make sure, this is the important part too, is that now that I sold for how many items I sold, which is 120 items, now I need to calculate how much it cost me to sell those 120 items. So by looking at this table here, right, we know we have two batches of inventory, right? We have our first batch of inventory for a dollar and fifty, and uh, or sorry, a hundred a hundred items at a dollar fifty, and our second batch of items is a hundred at a dollar and fifty four. Now, because we're using FIFO method, this is how we're gonna understand it. We're going to take our first batch of inventory, which in this case is our first batch, which was the first hundred that we bought on June 1st that cost $1.50 each, right? In this case, right, I sold a total of 120 items. So in this case, I'm gonna get rid of my first 100 items because that is what I sold. I sold 120 items. Therefore, my first batch of inventory, which is a total of 100 items, I'm going to eliminate that entire row because this batch came first, okay? So once I done that, then I got rid of that first 100 items. So now the next thing is I sold 20 more units. So in this case, I sold 20 more units, okay? So if I got rid of my first batch of inventory, how many batches of inventory do I have left? 
I only have my second batch of inventory, which cost me a dollar and fifty four cents each. Okay, and in this case, right, if it cost me a dollar and fifty four cents each, then and I'm not taking all of it, right? I'm only taking a portion of it, which is I'm only selling. I only need to sell twenty more because I only sold a hundred and twenty. I already got rid of my first hundred, so therefore I have twenty more items to sell. So in this case, right, twenty more items to sell. Twenty times a dollar fifty-four because that's how much it's going to cost per item, okay? Which is going to give me a calculated amount of thirty dollars and eighty cents. So in this case, right, I add those two numbers together, one fifty, which is my first batch of a hundred, plus my um, twenty batch for uh, thirty dollars and eighty cents to give me a grand total. Cost of goods sold to be one eighty eighty, okay, all right, and then of course when I have this piece of information, right, I'm gonna recalculate to get my ending inventory. There are two ways that you can calculate ending inventory, right? One is to simply go back to your inventory that you have currently on hand, right, which is eighty times a dollar fifty four. Will give you a total of one hundred and twenty-three dollars and twenty cents. Or another simple factor is you're gonna take your goods available, right? Which is a total of a hundred, uh, three hundred and four dollars, right? If you already know one component, which is your cost of goods sold, right? You can easily solve for your ending inventory very easily, right? You take your three hundred four, which is your goods available, and you subtract out what you sold. Which was a hundred eighty eighty, and you're going to get the same exact answer of one twenty three twenty. Okay. Okay. So again, notice this, right? When I cost my goods sold, I started from the beginning, and my ending, uh, my ending balance is going to be whatever I have left over, or the last batch that I had.、Um, Left remaining is going to be the last batch of inventory. But notice this: this is how I'm going to calculate it, right? I'm going to calculate it based on the order that I received my inventory, right? In this case, FIFO, meaning the first batch that came first, I'm going to sell that one first, and then so on and so forth, right? Any questions here? Not really, no. No. Okay. All right. So that's just taking a look at that right there, right? But because there's one thing that we have that we need to do when it comes to periodic inventory, because we need to do what's called a conversion entry. So what a conversion entry does is, is at the end of the giving accounting period, we must make an adjustment to our inventory because right now, where is my inventory? They're currently reflected as expenses, okay? But if they're currently expenses, what we have to do at the end of a given accounting period is we need to convert it into inventory, okay? And that's where calculating that entire table will come into play. All right, and this is what you're going to be journalizing, right? Because we're converting our expenses into inventory, right? Our assumption is at the end of the giving accounting period, whatever amount that we purchased, right, that we started out with, right, we cannot put it all in an inventory because we sold some along the way. So that's exactly why you would have inventory will be your remit, your ending inventory. So whatever amount that you have left in your inventory is going to be the first thing you're going to recognize. Okay, you're going to also recognize how many, how much it costs you to sell those items, and then of course you're going to recognize your purchase expense and your freight expense. Okay, so again, what do you mean by plugging in all these numbers in? So the table that we solved, right? We have all the key components to plug in our answers. So, for example, right? NDRR inventory, which is going to be the toys, 
or the ending inventory is going to be the first thing that you recognize because that is what we have left in from our purchases of inventory, right? That's the only thing that we have left remaining and that's the only thing that we can transfer into our inventory on hand because we still have that as inventory. So in this case, right, we're gonna take what we saw from in the table. Our ending inventory was 123 to 20. We're gonna plug that in right there. We're gonna recognize how much it costs us to sell those items. So in this case, cost of goods sold, which cost me 18080. So I'm gonna plug that in there. Okay. Then we're gonna plug in the next two answers, which is gonna be your purchase expense and your freight expense. Your purchase expense is something that we started off with in our net purchases, right? Where we figured out the very the, the how much it cost me in grand total, my total purchase price for purchasing the 200 items, okay? Which in this case was cost me 253. And then of course my freight cost, which is a separate cost of $51, you're gonna plug that right in. And then guess what? Your total debits will equal your total credits, okay? Of, in this case, we'll give you a grand total of 304 on each side, okay? So that's just doing the conversion entry. All right, any questions here? No. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about beginning inventory, okay? So now that we're doing a continuation, right, and this is what's gonna happen, is that once we finish an accounting period, right, we're going to have what's called inventory on hand or beginning inventory, okay? So in this case, we're given that on June 15, we had a remainder of 80 toys, costing a grand total of $123.20, okay? So what do we do with that beginning inventory, okay? Now, of course, you're gonna plug that into your inventory on hand, but in this case, I'm gonna skip over that because when we do the example in class, I'll show you exactly what to do. So then, on June 18, I end up making another purchase of 100 toys for $1.27 with a freight of 25 and so on and so forth, okay? So once again, we're going to plug those numbers into our inventory um, right here worksheet. In this case, we're focusing on just our purchases, okay? So once again, we plugged in our numbers, right? We have 100 at $1.27 and we also have a second batch of 100 um, at $1.30, okay? Same thing we're gonna do, we're gonna solve for the purchase price of 127 plus 25 gives you a total of 152, okay? Cost per item here is going to be $1.52, okay? We're gonna solve for our second batch again. So 100 at $1.30 is gonna give you 130, plus 26 is gonna give you 156, which is going to give you your total, your cost per item to be um, $1.56, right? Now, once we get that information, we're going to plug in and solve um, getting our sum or totals in each column. So we're going to get a total of your quantity, which is a total of 200 available. And then we're going to get a total of $257 for your total purchase price. Your total freight is once again 51. And last but not least, your total total is going to be 308. Okay. So we're, once again, we're going to take these four numbers and we're going to go ahead and plug it back into our inventory worksheet here, right? We're going to plug it in for our net purchases, right? Assuming we have no returns and allowances. So your net purchases is going to be your uh, the 200 at 308, okay? Now here's what's different or unique about this, um, this scenario is that we have beginning inventory, right? We know that from this, right, we have 80 items on hand. That's our beginning inventory, right? And it's a, at right now a total of 123.20, right? Which we know, right? that it's going to cost me $1.54 per item because we carried it from our previous uh, inventory worksheet, 
Okay, we carried it over and brought it into our new worksheet. So then now we is our, uh, again, beginning balance. We're going to carry down our net purchases from above. And what we're going to do here is we're going to total them up because, again, the formula to solve for your total goods available is your beginning plus your net purchases. So in this case, 80 plus 200 will give you a total goods available to sell is going to be 280 toys. Okay, so in this case, right, my inventory right here, I have three batches of inventory, right? I have 80, 100, and 100, okay? We were also given the idea that on June, uh, I'm sorry, on June 30th, that we had an ending uh, remaining of 60 items on hand left. So in this case, right, uh, we're going to solve for a cost of goods sold, right? If we have a total of 280 minus 60 that we, um, that we have left, our assumption is that we must have sold 220 toys. And then now we need to solve for 220 toys that are being sold. So in this case, we're going to go right back to our list of items that we have on hand. Okay. So in this case, because whatever that we carried over from our previous worksheet, which is our beginning inventory, is going to be the assumption that that batch came first. Okay. So in this case, right, my 80 remaining at $1.54 with a total cost of 123.20 is going to be the first batch of inventory we're going to get rid of, or in this case, sell. Okay, so we're going to pop that in there saying we sold our first 80 items. Okay, then the next one here is going to tell me that, well, that's only 80 items out of 220. So therefore, I still have uh, 160 left remaining, okay? So in this case, or in this case, sorry, not 160, 140 remaining, okay? So then if I have to sell 140, right, my next batch of inventory I'm going to take a look at is going to be the one that I bought on June 18, which cost me $1.52. In this case, right, I'm taking the whole batch of inventory. So therefore... I'm taking out the entire batch of the 152, okay? Now, I have a total of 180 toys sold. I still need to sell 40 more to get me a grand total of 220. So in this case, right, I only have one batch of inventory left, which is going to cost me $1.56 each. So I'm going to calculate 40 times $1.56 to give me a grand total of $62.40, which then leaves me with 60 items left in my inventory, okay? And I need to calculate my grand total here. So I got a grand total of 220 items sold at a grand total cost of $337.60, okay? And once again, 60 times $1.56 is going to give me a total of $93.60, okay? So this is what happens when you have beginning inventory, right? You're going to treat it as if it's a batch of inventory, right? Something that you carried over from the previous worksheet, okay? And we're going to cost it exactly in the order that we found it because in this case, right, that was the previous batch as of June 15, right? June 15, you had these inventories, okay? And then you made the other purchases of inventory later on. So the FIFO method is still going to be intact that you are getting rid of the first batches of inventory that you purchased, okay? Any questions here? Mm. No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So once again, because we reached the end of the accounting period, we need to do a conversion entry once again. So here, this time, we have a new key feature here, which is that we need to introduce um, 
the our ending inventory and our beginning inventory, right? In this idea, if we take a look at it and think of it in reality, right? We sold the inventory that we had on hand. So therefore, we sold the batches of inventory that we had on hand, our beginning balance, right? Therefore, we must credit the account because we got rid of the first items in there. Okay, so think of it that way. So we're gonna plug that as if we sold our first batch of inventory. So that's our beginning inventory right there. Again, ending, cost of goods sold, purchase, and freight expense are all gonna be the same exact as the previous scenario, right? You're gonna plug in your ending balance first. You're gonna plug in your cost of goods sold. You're gonna plug in your purchases and your freight expense. The only difference here is that we also need to recognize that we had a beginning balance. And instead of calculating it in here, right, we're going to make it look like we, uh, we sold it first. Or in this case, we got rid of our inventory on hand, our beginning inventory. Okay? So if we're getting rid of our beginning inventory, we're going to credit our inventory account. Okay? All right, so chapter review, we talked about the um, periodic method and we also talked about how we journalized it but we also talked about what the conversion entry will entail okay we talked about the costing methods which is FIFO which is first in first out and we talked about um, that's what we talked about today was first in first out okay any questions in regards to chapter 5.3 No, not really. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive right into our very first example here. Okay. So here's the example here. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to have you guys practice how to journalize, once again, the purchase of inventory. And then we're gonna practice plugging it into our inventory worksheet, okay? So again, um, question number one says your inventory method is periodic and is FIFO. Assume that purchases were uh, made on an account, okay? So in this case, right, um, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now I'm using Excel and on the Google Classroom, whichever one that you're more comfortable with, whether it's using Excel I've also posted the Word document so you can print them out. I also, I think I also posted a PDF if you just prefer to print it out without having to fix anything when you download the um, Word worksheet. But in this case, right, um, whatever makes it easier for comfortable for you to use. But however, I'm going to be using Excel, okay, because the purpose of this class is also to have you guys also learn Excel to in regards to using it for accounting, okay? Because when we enter in formulas and et cetera, et cetera, it makes it that much easier to fill out and um, basically do a lot, the, quit, the, the math a lot quicker when you're dealing with accounting, okay? So I'll be also teaching you as well as we go through filling out the Excel worksheet, I will be focusing mostly on Excel, okay? So again, first scenario we have here is on April 5th, we purchased 1,000 units at $5 each with the freight costing $100. So let's go ahead and practice journalizing that first, okay? So it is April 5th, okay? How do I journalize this? Purchase expense. Good. Purchase expense, right? Yes. For how much? Five thousand. Okay, what else? Freight expense. Right, we have free expense. For how much? It's in 100. 
100, okay? So in this case, right, um, I left the formatting up to you. So whether you like it, accounting style, uh, which gives you your dollar signs on the side. If you like comma style, so like me, I like comma style where it gives you the commas in there, but it gives you the two decimal places. You can even do currency, which you do get the, the dollar signs there too, but it's just closer to the number, okay? So again, I prefer the comma style, okay? But um, I'll go ahead and do, I guess, accounting style. So it makes it easier for you guys to understand. Now again, I could even enter in the formula just exactly the way it is, right? So in this case, right, I could say 1,000 units times $5 will give me $5,000, right? I can type in my formula just like that into my um, cells, okay? Um, again, and then what's my, how did I pay for these items? What was my assumption that I wrote here? How did I pay for um, these items? Account payable. Good, accounts payable, right? And in this case, instead of having to type it in, I can just add these two up together to give me 5,100, okay? Of course, I'm also gonna add in my um, little description here that I purchased, okay, 1,000 units at $5 each, okay? So that's how I, I'm gonna journalize my first one and I'm using Excel for this case, okay? So then let's go ahead and plug it into our first inventory worksheet, okay? So here, I'm, like I've mentioned before, this section right here is just breaking down your total purchases, okay? This right here is your inventory on hand. This right here is to help you calculate your um, net purchases as well as your cost of goods sold. This right here is your workspace, okay? So it's an empty section for you to figure out your calculations here. And this is your returns and allowances, okay? So again, today, I'm not going to focus on returns and allowances. I'm only going to focus on the, um, the top section and half of the middle, okay? So first thing that we have here is we purchased our inventory, right? We purchased 1,000 units at $5 each with the freight costing $100, okay? And um, in this case, right, we got, we got, we have to solve for our total purchase price, which is going to be your quantity times your, oh, sorry, your quantity times your unit price, right? Which is, which gives you $5,000, right? Now, how do you solve for total cost? Uh, total cost is uh, purchases plus um, freight. Good. So here, what I'm doing here is I'm using cell referencing, where I'm just clicking the cell because whatever's in that cell, right, the information that I put input in there is going to help me calculate my stuff a lot quicker. I don't need to type it in. I'm using cell referencing. Okay, and this is how you're most likely to be able to fix your mistakes a lot easier, right? So in this case, that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm self-referencing D6 plus um, E6, which gives, which is my um, purchase price of 5,000 plus 100, gives me a total of 5,100, okay? Now, how do I solve for my cost per item? Uh, cost per item is total cost uh, divided by quantity. Okay, divided by quantity. So I'm going to take my 5,100 and divide it by, by my 1,000. Gives me a total of $5.10. Okay? Now, once we get to this section here, right, we will get like nice and even numbers. But when we move down and further and we hit um, weighted average, we will be using the equal round formula, which allows you to round up your numbers to the nearest penny. 
Now for this case, right, if you do come across where your cost per item is an unroundable number where it goes uh, 1.65789, right, what you can do is you have the executive choice to either round your cost, to cost per item in the very beginning but you have to be very careful when you do that because you could cause, um, you know, your math, right? It could cause your uh, numbers to also not match either. So you definitely want to be careful when you do that. So what I prefer you to do in this class is I'm going to be teaching you unrounded numbers, okay? Because in this case, when you sell a thousand items, right? That one thousandth of a penny will make a difference. And especially if this isn't your first thousand of items that you sell, you're, you're constantly selling thousands and thousands of items every week, that will hurt you at the end of the year. Okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be teaching you um, how to use unrounded numbers to round it off to the nearest penny. Okay? So in this case... It came out even. It was $5.10 per item, okay? And that's how we plug in using our inventory worksheet, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the next scenario. So we have here, right, that on April 10, we purchased 750 units at $5.75 each with the freight costing $75. So again, let's journalize this. It is 410, okay? How should my journal look like? Uh, with a purchase expense, uh, and freight expense, and account payable. Good, right? In this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Okay. But this time, what is so what is different about my purchase expense? How much is my total purchase expense? Mm. Uh, purchase expense is uh, 750 15. times uh, 575. Right, which gives me a grand total of $4,312.50. How much was my freight? Uh, 75. 75. Good. It's giving me a grand total of $4,387.50. Okay. So once again, I'm going to make a little note here that I purchased 750 units at $575 each. So now let's go ahead and plug that into my inventory worksheet. Okay, so I got 410, 750 at 575 with a freight of 75. Okay. So once again, when you're in this worksheet, what you can do is you can actually copy formulas down in the Excel, right? You can do that by, if you click here, right? If I double click here, this is what I sell reference. I sell reference that my quantity times my unit price is going to give me 51, 55,000, excuse me, right? So what I can do here is because I used relative cells, right, where it can move across, right? What I can do is called the fill tool, okay? If I click on here, you see this little green little square or triangle, right? Once you put your mouse on top of that and it becomes a black plus sign or a black cross, you can drag that down and you can copy the formula down. So in this case, right, when I double click on this formula, it literally said, take the quantity of this, times it by the unit price to give me a total um, purchase price of $4,312.50. So then if I drag this formula all the way down, all I need to do is just plug in my numbers and I would get my answers immediately, okay? Now, but you can also do this too if you want to keep practicing formulas in Excel. You can just simply just um, press your equal sign and just ta like tap in all of your um, operations, right? So for, for example, total cost, right, which is going to be my purchase price 
plus my freight, enter, and right there, I typed in my uh, formula again in that same exact column right there to give me a total cost of $4,387.50. So in this case, what is my cost per item for my second batch of inventory? Okay, we're gonna take my four three eight seven fifty. It should be five eighty five. Five dollars and eighty five cents. Okay. Now, of course, you can also double check to see if these are rounded numbers by pushing this um, little um, icon here, which allows you to increase your decimals or decrease them. So notice this. This is an even number because you have a bunch of zeros at the end of it. So therefore, these numbers are um, evened out at the, it's rounded out to the nearest penny. So in this case, $5.85, okay? Good, all right? So let's go ahead and finish up the rest of this. So again, on April 20th, we purchased 200 units at $6 each with the freight costing $20. So this is what you can do too, right? You do have the option where you can plug in your numbers here. So then instead of having to calculate the numbers twice, right, you can just solve it here. So we bought 200 items at $6 with the freight costing $20. So in this case, if I have my Excel do my calculation for me, I get $1,200 for my purchase price, and I get my total cost of $1,220, all right? And I can even go as far as how much is that going to cost me per item. In this case, it cost me $6.10 per item. So what I can do here is I now know I can plug this stuff in to my journal right here, okay? But rule of thumb here is because you guys are practicing this on a beginner level, right? I'm going to have you guys do the journal first and then plug your answers in to um, the, uh, the journal. I mean, plug your numbers into the journal and then plug your numbers into the inventory worksheet last. Because the purpose of this class is to teach you to properly journalize, okay? And what happens oftentimes is some students will just go through the inventory worksheet and completely forget about journalizing, okay? So again, uh, for this one, I just wanna make sure that we're practicing this the correct way, okay? So again, purchase expense, right, was, um, in this case, you can also sell reference from, wor from one worksheet to another. Okay, so I could say, well, it was 1200 uh, $1, plus 20, which gives you a total of 1220. Okay, all right, and again, we purchased a total of 200 units at $6 each. Okay, and there you go, I plugged in my journal and I've already plugged it into my inventory worksheet. Okay, whichever way it makes it easier for you, but like I've mentioned before, I'm gonna have you just practice journalizing first and then going ahead and um, plugging in your numbers into the inventory worksheet. Okay. Last thing we have here is April 25th, which is that you purchase 500 units at $6.25 each with the freight costing you $50. So 500 at 625. Okay. So let's go ahead and journalize this last uh, purchase here. So what should my journal look like? Uh, uh, with a per 
uh, 500 times 620, uh, 625. Okay. How much was freight? 50? Uh, 50. Okay. Giving me a grand total of 3175. And last but not least, right, I need to make a note that I purchased 500 units at 625 each. Okay. All right. So let's plug that into my inventory worksheet on hand. So it's April 25th. We purchased 500 units at 625 with a freight of 50. So therefore, what is my total purchase price? Three thousand one hundred twenty-five. Good. All right. Plus fifty gives me a total cost of three one hundred seventy-five. Good. And then, last but not least, what is going to be my total cost per item? Six thirty-five. Good. Okay. So let's take a look at my scenario one more time. Now it tells me that at the end of April 30th, I have a total of 600 units on hand. Okay. So that means I have 600 left on hand. So I'm going to go down to my bottom half here and I'm going to plug in my number here. Maggie, can you mute your microphone? We can hear everything in your background. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. Ending inventory, we know we have at least 600 units left, right? We're in the quantity column. So we have 600 units left, okay? So let's go ahead and solve for our total costs because now we've reached the end of our accounting period. So what is my total quantity that I purchased? Okay, in order to do that, you could do your equal sum okay to go ahead and solve for this so what is my total quantity that i purchased uh it should be 2450 2450 good now I also need my total purchase price, okay? So in this case, you could do equal sum once again under my total. So I need to total up my four batches of inventory. How much it is my total purchase prices? So equal sum. It should be 13,000. Okay. 13. So, yes, 637, yes. Good, okay. We can also do the same thing to our freight costs, right? If you can pull down your formula, you can drag your formula across as well. So, what is my total freight expense? Two hundred forty-five. Yes. So then, what is my total total cost? Uh, 
$13,882.50. Good. Excellent. Okay. So these numbers are very crucial because that's what's going to help us plug in our numbers down below. Now, if you need a uh, visual aid in this case, like what numbers to plug in, you're free to welcome to use your highlighter, okay? So if I want to know where my purchases go, okay? So in this case, I'll go ahead and do it for this class, right? I'm going to highlight this number here because that's my total quantity that I purchased, right? So this number is going to go here, okay? My 200. And of course, my total cost, which is going to be Let's see, let's choose a different color. Let's choose orange, okay? That's going to be this number right here, okay? Is going to be your total purchase. It, your total purchases is going to be your total purchase price, okay? This number that we get for our um, returns and allowances, right, is actually going to be in this section over here, which once again, we're not going to focus on anything on this section just yet. We're going to wait till after we just get the idea of how to use the um, worksheet first, and then we'll introduce it later. So in this case, our assumption is that we do not have any returns or any allowances. Okay? So therefore, your subtotal, right? Let's take a look at this column right here. This column gives you a guideline of what you need to do in order to solve for the columns in this row. So in this case, my subtotal is going to be my purchases minus, right, in parentheses, the minus your returns and allowances to equal your subtotal. So that's what I'm going to do exactly here. I'm going to take my purchases, I'm going to subtract out my returns and allowances, and that's still going to give me my quantity of 200 and, uh, 2,450 items. Same thing here, right? My purchase of 13,63,750 minus zero is going to give me 13,63,750, okay? And the next thing that we got to do is we got to enter in our freight, which we need to add in order to get our total net purchases. In this case, like I've mentioned before, freight adds zero to quantity. However, we also have to add it up here, right? Because we solved for our total freight expense, which is $245. So in this case, I'm going to highlight this too so you know exactly where these numbers come from. So in this case, I'm going to choose this green right here. Okay, and that is where this number came from. Wrong box there. Okay, there you go. Okay, I took this number from this column right here. And then that's going to, you said you're going to add these two numbers together to get your total net purchases. This is what's going to happen. Okay. There you go. So now, again, you have your total of 2,450 items at a grand total cost of 138250 So in this case, because we're, our assumption is that we don't have returns and allowances then you then your in then your columns should match accordingly okay so this column right here for your total cost should match your total net purchases but i'm not going to uh reference that because that is not true if we have returns and allowances it's actually going to be different but in this case that's the numbers that we're going to be plugging in is going to be this yellow this orange and this green okay now, right, now that we have these net purchases, I'm going to highlight this because this is where we're going to be taking these numbers and plugging them in down below. In this case, our beginning balances is usually where we're going to take it from our inventory on hand. In this case, we don't have any. It's zero, okay? So therefore, zero and zero. 
We're going to carry down our net purchases from above. Okay? So our net purchases is what we copied from this above here. Okay? So then now, what is our goods available? It's going to be your beginning inventory plus your net purchases, which in this case, right, you add zero to them. Your net purchases is going to be your goods available. Okay? So in this case, I have a total of 2,450 items available to sell, cost me at a grand total of $13,000. $882.50. Okay, so now we need to solve for our formula because now um, in this case we need to solve how many items we sold. In this case, right, we have a total of 2,450 items available and we have 600 remaining. So here, what is our assumption? How many items did I sell? Simple, you take your um, goods available Subtract out your ending inventory, and what's your total amount that you sold? 1,850, yes. Good. Excellent. So now, this is where I need to solve how much it cost me to sell these items. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to... Um, create this column right here. I'm gonna create this, I'm gonna use like a light blue color, okay? And this is going to be my total work area space, okay? So my goal is to get to 1850. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my formula here to equal sum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a running balance. So every time that I um, enter something here, it's going to tally up my totals here. And I'm going to apply that also to my total, total cost here. Okay, why am I doing this? This will make sense when we actually talk about what batch came first. So in this case, we're focusing on FIFO, right? Let's take a look at our batches of inventory, okay? We have a total of four batches of inventory, right? I got one on April 5th. I got one on April 10th, one on April 20th, and one on April 25th. And the quantities are all here, okay? And the cost per item is all here. So in this case, right, which batch actually came first? In this case, my April 5th was the first batch that I bought. So in that case, I have a total of 1,000 units in that very first batch of inventory. Now let's take a look. How many items did I sell? We sold 1,850. So therefore, I need to sell out that first batch of 1,000 items, okay? So that first 1,000 items, okay, which I know for a fact it's gonna cost me $5.10, but in this case, I don't need to calculate my quantity times my cost because I already know I'm going to get rid of the entire batch. That entire batch is going to cost me $5,100, okay? It's going to cost me $5,100, okay? Now let's take a look at down below. So right now, my current cost of goods sold is $1,000 at 5,100, okay? So I'm creating a running balance. Now, how many more items do I need to sell? I need to sell 850. So let's take a look here. Now, this is what you can do too. You can cross out your um, inventory as you go, okay? That is something that you can do too. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the strike through. And I'm going to click OK. So there you go. I eliminated my first batch of inventory. Now, in this case, I, the next batch I have is 750, right? I'm going in order of which came first. In this case, I, I finished off my first batch of inventory of my 1,000. So now I have left is 7. I have my second batch of 750, my third batch at 200, and my 
third, fourth batch at 500, okay? So therefore, I need to sell 850 more items. So in this case, my second batch of inventory is for 700. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that 750 items, okay? In this case, right, I know that it costs me $5.35 each. In this case, since I'm taking the entire batch of inventory, I don't need to calculate because I know the entire batch of inventory is going to cost me $4,387.50, okay? So therefore, once again, since I eliminated this entire batch of inventory, I can go ahead and strike through that out because I don't have anything in there. Okay, This inventory is gone. Oops, I missed. Okay, there you go. So then let's see what I have here. So I have a total of 1750 um, items that I sold at a grand total of $9,000. $487.50, okay? But in this case, I still have 100 more items to go. So in this case, I'm gonna type in that I have 100 more items to go to get me a grand total of 1850. Now in this case, right, I only have two batches of inventory left, right? I have one batch for uh, 200 and the other batch for 500. In this case, which batch am I going to take out from first? The 200. Uh, exactly. You have on um, the, the 20th, right? April 20th, I have 200 items here. Now, in this case, I'm not taking all of it, right? I'm only needing 100 of them. So, therefore, what is it going to cost me per item? Uh, $6. Oh, $6.10. $6.10, and ten cents, right? So in this case, I need to do my calculation here. I need to solve for how much it's going to cost me for 100 of those items costing me at $6.10. and ten cents. So what's my grand total here? $610. $610. And now I reached my end of conclusion, right? My cost of goods sold is going to be a total of eighteen fifty at a total cost of ten thousand ninety seven dollars and fifty cents. So in this case, that's where I'm gonna be copying this number right here, which is gonna come from here. Okay. So all I have left is my ending inventory, which I can solve by taking my um, goods available, subtracting out my cost of goods sold. So how much should be my ending inventory? $3,785. $3,785. And that concludes my inventory worksheet. Okay, I finished it. I have my total ending balance. I have the cost of goods sold. I have my total purchases. I have everything is done, is complete. Okay, however, now when we continue on, we're going to go take a break after, not, not right now, but in a few minutes here. We're going to continue on with beginning inventory because now, right, we still have 600 items available at a total of $3,785, okay? And we're gonna carry this information into our inventory on hand on the next worksheet, okay? So now that we completed our inventory worksheet, let's go ahead and complete our conversion entry, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right back into our journal, right? We reached the end of our accounting period, so it's April 30th, right? Now, what did I buy? In this case, I wasn't specific. So what I'm gonna say here is that you're going to be entering this into your inventory, okay? I also have to recognize my cost of goods sold, okay? Because I sold some of my inventory along the way, right? And in this case, right, if I think of it this way, 
I created or when I purchased my periodic inventory, I immediately associate it as an expense. Now, if I imagine that my expenses are in buckets, right? What I'm essentially doing is I'm taking my buckets of expenses and I'm dumping them into inventory and my cost of goods sold, right? I'm zeroing them out, right? I'm taking everything that's in my purchase expense bucket and dumping it into either inventory or my cost of goods sold. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my freight expense too. I'm gonna take everything that's in there and dump it between my inventory and my cost of goods sold. So that is what we're doing. We're going to um, zero out the accounts. Okay, freight expense, okay? So what was my total ending balance in my inventory? Six hundred is quantity. What's my total cost? Three thousand seven hundred eighty-five. Good, right? Remember, in our journal, we cannot write that we have quantity, right? That was um, monetary measurement, right? We have to do it in terms of value or in terms of total cost. So in this case, my total cost of six hundred units left in my inventory is going to cost me $3,785, right? What was my total cost of my goods sold? $10,097.50. Good. What was my total purchases? Oops, wrong one. What was my total purchases? Thirteen thousand six hundred thirty-seven fifty. Good. And then, last but not least, what was my total freight? Three hundred and forty-five. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, rule of thumb here is you should always double check that your debits match your total credit. So in this case. My, I have a total debit of thirteen eight eight two fifty, and I have a total credit of thirteen eight eight two fifty. All right, and of course, my little description here is going to be conversion entry, or you can write convert to inventory, whichever way you want to put it in there. Okay. And that concludes our very first example of the inventory worksheet. Any questions in regards to journalizing or how to use the inventory worksheet? No. Okay. Kind of easy, kind of hard, right? It's just a lot of memorization of where things go, right? And having to calculate exactly what you need to calculate, right? So, so, yes. Uh, this 600 quantity mm -hmm. have two prices. Why two prices? Because uh, April 20th and last purchase, this 500. Yes, here. Yes, 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 yes. And we'll take a look at that when we when we come back from the break, when we do the second part of the, um, the, 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 Inventory worksheet. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we don't have any questions, let's go ahead and take a break. It is exactly 9.57. Um, I'll go ahead and round it to uh, 10 o'clock. So let's go ahead and be back no later than 10.20.